Hi guys and welcome to this atmospheric step-by-step -step landscape winter watercolour tutorial. I'm also going to share with you in this tutorial a really cool technique for fixing warped paintings. That's the paintings that are buckled and make it difficult to paint on as well. So I hope you're going to find that helpful. Let's get started. For a full list of all the materials I'm using, colours and alternative colours, please see the description below. I'm using rough watercolour paper, 300 grams, about 10 by 7 inches. I'm mixing up some cobalt blue here with some burnt sienna, just a big puddle using my size 8 brush. I'm just using an ordinary twig sharpened with a pencil sharpener. I've just got this from my garden and I'm dipping it into the puddle of paint and I'm drawing a really simple landscape scene. So I've got a horizon line, a little bit of a diagonal there to the left to draw your eye in. And I'm just sort of scribbling in some distant trees. So this is completely out of my imagination, but I want it to be sort of a winter scene with some lovely cool colours. So I'm just sort of sketching that in. It's quite nice to use the twig with the watercolour because it can you can just wash it away so you don't have any pencil marks it also loosens you up so I'm wetting the sky with my one inch brush just with some clean water down to those distant trees down to the horizon line and I'm just painting that cobalt blue with the burnt sienna wet into wet so it's a very sort of grey colour and I'm leaving some gaps for the clouds and I'm painting this wet into wet. I've mixed up a touch more of the burnt sienna and cobalt blue so it's slightly darker and I'm painting some darker cloud shadows at the top of the sky. I'm using a little bit of deep scarlet here and it's a Daniel Smith colour. If you don't have that colour, you could use a little bit more burnt sienna, cobalt blue with a pinch of red or alizarin crimson. So this again is slightly darker, so there's less water, more paint, and I'm just adding these delicious colours in the sky wet into it. Added a touch more cobalt blue to that colour. You can use ultramarine as an alternative to cobalt blue. And I'm also using the sort of corner of my brush to apply the clouds as well to so get some nice random edges there. Tilting my painting as well to allow the paint to run down. You can see it running down there in the left hand corner to create some lovely atmospheric effects. I'm using some yellow ochre now, little puddle of yellow ochre, and I'm painting wet on dry here with my flat one inch brush, just in that sort of foreground area, going up to the horizon, really using expressive brush marks, getting more water there to dilute that color, because this is gonna look like snow as well, so I don't want it too dark or too colorful. And I'm using my paper towel just to lift off some of that colour to get some of the white of the paper, again, to make it look like snow. Mixing up some more cobalt blue here, and I'm adding a pinch of viridian. To make a blue-green colour, I'm painting it wet on dry at the horizon, but pushing it into that damp sky using my size 8 round brush. I'm adding a little bit of phthalo blue, you can use Prussian blue and a pinch of burnt sienna so you've got a sort of a dark sludgy green. I'm painting this damp into damp on the horizon area where it's slightly darker, still using that size 8 brush and pushing that dark up into some of the top of the trees there. So you'll see you get soft edges where it's wet into wet or damp into wet and hard edges as you can see on the horizon where it's wet on dry. I've mixed a pale wash of the cobalt blue with the burnt sienna sienna there and I'm painting this as you can see with my size 8 round brush it's pretty much very wet here so again you want your painting on a tilt so it doesn't run up into the sky so this is a little bit of a paler wash and as you can see the top part of that wash is sort of running up into the sky to make it look like the top of the trees so what I'm doing now is I'm going back to my twig and I'm just scratching into the sur damp surface of the paper this is permanent, but what it does, it scratches the paper and the paint runs into the scratch to create a dark, thin line. It's a really nice way of painting tree trunks and branches. You may want to practice this before you do it because, as I say, it is permanent. 
So I am mixing up here some Payne's Grey with a touch of burnt sienna. I'm painting damp into damp with my size four round brush just at the bottom of those trees there. And as you can see, it bleeds up slightly and it creates a natural look. And here's a close up. What I'm doing now is adding water to soften some of those edges. And that actually might create backgrounds or a cauliflower. And that's where you put a wet wash into a damp wash. And I think I've got one developing there just in the left hand corner of those trees as I'm dropping in that water there to create hopefully these happy accidents. So what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some ultramarine and a bit of Payne's Grey painting wet into wet on this right hand side just making that horizon look a little bit darker and it also creates a lovely contrast with the snow as well the dark against the light. So I'm using ultramarine mixed with some burnt sienna here using the belly of my brush not the tip so you get this lovely dry brush effect and I'm picking up the texture of the paper. Now if you feel you're not getting this result just wipe your brush gently onto a paper towel and less paint will come off your brush to create these lovely dry brush strokes. And what I'm doing now is using the tip of my brush with the ultramarine with a pinch of the burnt sienna, just painting a few little details there just on the horizon area. I'm using some burnt sienna here. I'm mixing it into that phthalo blue with a tiny touch of the Payne's Grey. It's quite a neutral dark. You could just use Payne's Grey and burnt sienna and painting wet on dry and then pushing it into that damp foreground that I painted with yellow ochre. And I'm letting it sort of run down a little bit adding more water, pulling it down to create what's going to, going to be some bushes, etc. And as you can see, the marks and that shape get smaller as it goes off into the distance, larger as it goes into the foreground. And if you notice as well, where the paint has hit a dry edge where I'm painting now, you get that texture, light against dark, against that sort of blanket of snow on that field to the left there. Painting a very dilute wash here to the right, and keeping the middle area there, which is going to be kind of a path, um, white, so it looks like a snowy path and you've got bushes to the right and left. Dropping in a little bit here of ultramarine with some burnt sienna, quite creamy, so it's damp into wet. So I've got these sort of dark sort of bushes, etc. just here. And the marks again go smaller as they go off into the distance bigger as they go to the foreground and you see you've got an element of linear perspective here so you've got that diagonal line leading to the distance there to create the illusion of depth in a painting so getting even creamier color here really dark ultramarine and burnt sienna painting this damp into damp and I've actually squeezed out my paints they're straight from the tube into my pans they're really creamy it allows me to paint these washes and I'm being quite abstract with my marks I'm letting my brush dance around the paper using some of the burnt sienna touch of the scarlet touch of Payne's gray Lo lots of delicious darks here and I'm painting this damp into wet on the right and left hand side there using lots of expressive abstracty sort of brush strokes going back in with my twig now having a scribble to create lots of textures and marks remember this is permanent so you'll get some lovely dark thin lines here and there I'm just having fun with it I'm using a little bit of salt here and I'm sprinkling this onto the damp paint. That will absorb the paint and will create some yummy lighter textures later. I'm just using my brush just to maneuver the paint around here and there, um, creating lighter marks in the distance. So literally using this size six brush um, to pull the paint around a little bit to create softer, lighter marks. And I'm just getting some water here and I'm going to drop a little bit of this on into the background here where those sort of blue grey trees are. Hopefully get some backgrounds. Remember backgrounds is putting a wet wash into a damp wash or a drying wash. I'm using my twig now literally to draw some really dark creamy marks. So it's straight from the tubed paint that I squeezed out earlier. I'm dipping it into the ultramarine, into the Payne's Grey to create these dark marks. So it's literally tubed paint, so it won't run at all. And I wanna create some impact here. 
And when you've got sort of hedgerows and twigs and things like that, they're quite abstract. So you can really have a lot of fun painting these marks using your twig. If you don't have a twig, you could use a matchstick even or a cocktail stick. And you can use a small, thin brush as well, size two or a rigger brush. But I quite like using a twig, especially in landscapes, to get these lovely sort of textural marks. And as you can see, I'm just having a wonderful play here. Swap to my size four round brush and I'm using a mixture of the Payne's Grey with the Ultramarine, painting this very dark blue-grey just here and there along that sort of hedge. The mark's getting slightly smaller as they go off in the distance. And I'm using the same colour here, slightly watered down, and just painting lots and lots of thin marks. Now this is in real time, so I'm going very fast because I want to create these lovely thin marks. I don't want to think too much, I just want to paint and have fun. So these are all tiny twigs and branches here in the foreground on the right hand side going back onto the left hand side and painting some Payne's grey in the bottom left hand corner softening that hard edge in the distance there so my eye doesn't get taken out by that light against dark so I'm using a clean damp brush just to soften that edge I want my focal point to be here where I'm pulling off some of the paint with the paper towel because I'm actually going to paint my two people there. So I really want a light against dark there to paint my focal point. So I'm mixing up some of the cobalt, you can use ultramarine and the burnt sienna. I'm spattering on the damp foreground using my size four brush just to create some textures there. Got a little bit in the sky, don't worry about that. Just lift off with your paper towel and you might want to protect around your paint area there just in case there's anything valuable. So I'm mixing up here ultramarine with the burnt sienna and I'm spattering here. The painting isn't quite dry but I want to create sort of lost and found edges so some areas are drier than others. So with this spattering some of the spots will sort of melt into the damp paint, others will look more crisp because the painting underneath has dried. So I'm spattering in the foreground here using my hand to sort of mask out the sort of light white snow area there. Um, you might get a messy hand but hopefully you'll rescue your or keep safe your snow. So this painting is from my imagination so I'm kind of just going and winging with it just seeing what happens. I love to spatter so it creates wonderful textures here and there and I'm spattering at the top of the tree. I've added a touch of crimson there as well to warm up those colours. You can use a little bit of red as well. Um, if you don't like spattering you can actually paint on your dot using the tip of your brush as what you can see I'm doing here. So it's time to allow your painting to dry naturally. So I've not used any hair dryers so the salt hopefully will create some light textures and as you can see it has here in the bottom right and left hand corner so I'm quite pleased with that. Sometimes when you're painting wet in wet your paper will warp and as you can see here my paper has warped it's all gone a bit wavy and curly a great solution to that is to iron the back of the painting with a warm iron. So just sort of check this as you're painting. You saw I checked there, make sure it's not too hot. Make sure that the painting is face down on a clean surface. You don't want any dirty marks to get on your painting. And also make sure your painting is thoroughly dry. I would also suggest testing this on an old painting, the back of an old painting, before you do this but the results are really good. Look at this, it's beautifully flat now and I can actually work on this now because before it was quite bumpy, now it's lovely and flat, ready to work on. So I'm sketching my people with an HB pencil. I've got an in-depth people painting tutorial available on YouTube. A link for that tutorial can be found in the description below, but I'm keeping it really nice and simple, an arched, window shape for the top of them and sort of two sort of skinny v shapes or triangle shapes for their legs one slightly shorter than the other so they look like they're walking and make their heads really small you can always make them bigger but it's a lot trickier to make bigger heads smaller so I'm mixing up some scarlet with a pinch of Payne's grey. You could use red, any colour you like. And I'm going to paint the person to the right, their coat or their jacket. Wet on dry with my size four round brush. I'm keeping it really, really simple. 
um, especially when you're painting little people you don't have to put much detail I always say no neck no hands no feet no details so I'm painting the person to the left here using ultramarine you can use a touch of Payne's grey but it's just sort of one solid color to begin with I'm rinsing my color taking the excess paint off and then lifting off some light on the left hand side I'm going to do the same with the person to the right and it's just to look like the lights coming from the left so in that if that's the case you can paint some shadows to the right hand side of both people damp into damp I'm still using my size four round brush it just makes them look a little bit 3d without adding too much detail so I'm using the Payne's grey painting wet on dry the legs one shorter than the other so as I say that it creates the illusion of them walking and you really want to bring their sort of legs to a point not paint any feet so it get it just your mind makes up for what's missing especially when they're off in the distance painting a little bit of shadow now using ultramarine with a pink pinch of Payne's Grey directly underneath the people wet on dry with my size 4 brush this will ground the people and stops them looking like they're floating along and I've just added a touch more of the Payne's Grey wet into wet just directly underneath the people themselves where it's slightly darker time to accessorize I've decided to give the person on the right a red scarf it really does draw your eye into the focal point they are my focal point they're leading your eye into the painting and around the painting they're the, my reason for the painting I'm just adding a bit of color to the back of their heads there touch of brown a little bit of ochre yellow ochre just so it's a touch of color not too much that red scarf's doing quite a good job and I'm just lifting off with my paper towel to create some more light on the left and adding some more shadows on the right hand side as well using some Payne's grey here with some ultramarine and I'm just giving the person to the right a bag just another accessory to create some more interest it's a very simple triangular shape and just adding a touch more dark to that shadow on the ground rinsing my brush there I'm just brushing off any of the salt that has dried there before I paint on top and now I'm just adding a few more little darks and details here using some of the burnt sienna and Payne's grey wet on dry in the left hand corner here of the foreground using a bit of dry brush effect as well just to really sort of create depth in the painting you have stronger tonal values more textures in the foreground and off in the distance you have the soft edges the cooler colors sort of the fuzziness and not so dark tonal values so I'm just adding more detail another way you can create depth in your painting I've turned my painting to the side here just to make it easier to draw in some branches and twigs do this whatever way makes you feel comfortable I'm using my size 4 round brush um, just to kind of connect the dots actually after I did all that spatter I just want to create a little bit of structure underneath here using Payne's grey with a bit of burnt sienna you can mix ultramarine with burnt sienna as well and I'm just sort of painting lots of quicker little twigs as well to sort of create lots of detail adding a few of those branches coming out into the sky area above the people to kind of connect them tell a story almost these little things and take your time you don't actually have to do this but I just thought it's quite a nice way of almost creating an arch around them as they walk off into the sort of misty distance there so just taking my time with these branches remember to breathe um, you don't have to do even as much as I'm doing here do what makes your painting look good to your eyes um, and of course I'm doing this from my imagination so it I'm sort of I could go on and on and sometimes in watercolor less really is more so I'm going to start thinking about um, sort of stopping in a minute before I overwork my painting so one way of doing that for me is to give my painting a spatter and because I painted these little branches um, in the sky area here above the people I thought it would be a good idea to spatter there as well to create sort of little sort of dead leaves about to fall off the trees there so I'm adding a few more little branches as well just to connect some of those dots as well it's quite a nice actually way of painting leaves actually using this spatter technique and I'm just adding a few more sort of details here and there 
and there are a few little marks in the sky so I've watered down my Payne's Grey with Burnt Sienna I'm just painting some little V shapes a little bit wider than a V wet on dry with my size four round brush to create some birds in the distance um, it's really quite nice to do this as well it's it's sort of those people are walking towards this and it tells a story but it also creates depth in the painting because those birds are quite far away and I just thought it would be quite nice to add a little bit more texture and details just in the foreground here. So I'm spattering quite a dark colour, the Payne's Grey, with a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. But you can paint, you know, spatter any sort of dark you fancy, really. So um, any spots or dots that you don't like, just lift off with your paper towel. Don't just leave them there because they landed. You're in charge of your painting, remember it's your creation and that's what's lovely about doing something like this so if you're worried as well painting something like this just paint in your sketchbooks or on the back of an old painting it takes the pressure off so mixing up some yellow ochre here just to add a little bit of light texture just in the foreground just watering it down a little bit more sometimes when you're spattering you kind of have to get the consistency just right for it to come off the brush Remember, if you're worried about getting any spots in the sky, etc., put a paper towel over there to protect your sky, just in case. But I'm just finishing off with a few more little spatters. And here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it inspires you to have a go at painting a sort of winter scene, atmospheric landscape and maybe adding people you don't have to. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you'd like to get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, why not think about joining my Patreon membership. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.